Hey there, and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced, Amiga hands in front of the camera channel. Yes, on YouTube, yes. Today we are going to, once again, feature the amazing Amiga 600, the world's smallest, most underproduced, poorly produced Amiga computer. Now, okay, that was, that was a little bit of a knock against the 600, wasn't it? What this video is about today, well, currently I have this Amiga 600 connected using one of these 23 pin to VGA type doohickeys going to a modern LCD monitor that can handle standard Amiga modes. It's not the greatest solution, but it is a solution. And of course, if you don't have that cable, you can use one of these tricky little fun adapters here. But there is an even better way to do this. There's a much, much better way to do this. And for those regulars out there of my channel, thank you, by the way, uh, you folks know that my Amiga 2500 behind me has an RGB to HDMI, which is the most clean, most beautiful, most gorgeous video output from an Amiga I have ever seen. And one of the tricks, okay, a 16 by nine monitor, like you see here. Why 16 by nine when the Amiga isn't? Because you wanna be able to map the Amiga's NTSC wider aspect completely one-to-one -one inside the display. And you really can't do that with a four by three unless you like crop the top and bottom and then you get a really, really small image. This gives you the biggest image with all the real estate. Plus obviously a 16 by nine monitor is gonna be more flexible for modern Amiga modes. So if you wanna run the high res monitor pack where you can do 1280 by 720 on your stock Amiga AGA chipset, by the way, hey, that's kind of fun, right? You've got that ability with this type of widescreen monitor. All right, so this is not an Amiga 2500, though. It's not even an Amiga 3000. Of course not. It has only three numbers, 600. It's a 600. Those computers use RGB to HDMI with the Zorro slots, the expansion slots. So how the heck are we supposed to do that with an Amiga 600? Uh, it doesn't even have a CPU slot on it. Is it something that goes in the trap door? But that's where our chip memory goes. No, what you will need is something like this. This crazy looking thing, which clips on to the, uh, well, probably the video chip, right? And it has this wacky looking ribbon. Look at this, isn't this fun? And then you need one of these things. This is a Raspberry Pi W0. Just the, just the one is fine for RGB to HDMI. You don't need a W2, a W1 works great. And then that sandwiches on to this little booger, the actual RGB to HDMI circuitry dingus thingy. These guys mush together, that cable goes in here, and then you get your HDMI output. Yay! I'm sure this will be really easy to do. Actually, I don't want to blow this up because, you know, these stupid pies are hard to get. I'm going to go ahead and see if I can get in touch with Dr. Chris. Let me, uh, let me get over to the phone. All right, so we're over here on Amiga phone. Let's see if I can get Chris here. And they, uh, well, you know what? I don't want everyone in the world calling him, so... Let me uh, just hide the number here. And it's ringing, it's ringing. Well, that's odd. He has a voicemail. Oh, cool, so he has, a, you know what? He has a whole voicemail subsection just for hold and modify. Chris Edwards Restoration, how about that? So for me, I guess because, you know, Q4, now he's saying blah, blah, hard drives, installing workbench, installing a CIA chip. Oh, RGB to HDMI. Press three. Okay. Well, uh, well, that was easy. I can figure this out. Oh, hey, thanks. I mean, I'm glad he's got these recordings set up so I can figure this stuff out. All right. So now that I have that nifty advice from Dr. Chris Edwards, Dr. Chris, Chris Edward Restoration, I have to tackle this. And what do we see in here? We see a lot of stuff that's already in here. How is this going to work? I have no idea. One thing I really do know is that honestly, you really should remove the RF, the old RF modulator, so you can run the HDMI out that way. I need to send this, I need to strip some, this whole motherboard down and send it to Dr. Chris to have him recap it. Uh, so I know I'm doing all this work and it's like, okay. And, and yes, of course the 600 does work. As a lot of you may or may not know, your computer or device can actually work without capacitors that are fully functional. That's because capacitors are like little mini batteries and 
They store energy for when it's needed to help keep the current smooth and whatnot and prevent spikes and under voltages. So technically, yes, under ideal voltage situations where everybody's playing nice and nobody's trying to be a little aggressive with their power consumption, yeah, you can actually run a computer without capacitors. So even though these have, have leaked and drained and done gross things, because computer still works, but it, they do need to be redone. You obviously do not want to continue using a computer with bad capacitors. So that's why, yeah, this RF modulator needs to come out to make room for the HDMI output. What I can try and do is snake it out the trap door here, maybe out the side, just leave the lid off. Don't, don't, you know, secure it down. Uh, but before I get into all that, I have all of this I have to deal with. I have my A630 accelerator. I have my little compact flash hard drive. So all this stuff needs to get out of the way. So let's, let's get into that. Remember how hard this was to get on? Nice firm press. And now here I go. I have to pop it off. Makes me really curious though. Is this going to fit? Will this fit with this mounted? And is there anything on here that's going to short out? I don't, it doesn't look like it. No, there's nothing. Yeah, I don't see anything that's actually connected here, so we should be fine. Oh, that was on there nice and good. This has to go on to the Denise. And this crystal could be in the way as well. This is going to be very uh, interesting. So if you look here, there is, um, there is a notched side, okay? That matches the notched side on the Denise. So there's only one way for it to go on. All right, so that has been pressed down firmly and seems to have locked in place. And is nice and secure, and it looks like I'm not having any interference with that crystal oscillator thingy there. So the next thing is this ribbon cable here. You want to have it stay blue up when it goes into this connector. Now they give you in, in maybe earlier versions of the RGB to HDMI, you got a much smaller ribbon cable. This one is now long enough that you know what I might be able to do? Watch this. What a winner. So now the whole Raspberry Pi Jingus thingy will be external on the 600 instead of internal. Now that's sloppy, yes, but until I get this RF thing removed, it just, you know, it frees up some space inside. And I'm a little concerned with that uh, A630. So this little connector here, it's kind of like the connector on the keyboard connector for the 1200 and the 600. You want to lift it out, give it a little push, and then close it up. Pretty much like the A600, 1200 keyboard thingy. So there you go. So yeah, this is gonna live outside. And then the Pi goes on. So here's the pins. It does not go on this way, like making this really wide. It actually goes on this way, keeping it kind of compact and small. Just for the record, this, all, this will all fit in your 600. You don't have to go external. I'm just going external because I still have my RF modulator and also this will just be easier access to kind of get it out of the way. So there we go. Let's do that. All right, next I need to get my A630 accelerator back on here. As I said, hopefully it doesn't interfere. Okay, that's on there. Now we will go ahead and gingerly place our hard drive back down in its tucked and folded position. Go ahead and drop the keyboard back down, making note to watch out for the lovely little RGB HDMI. So now we have this really, really short HDMI cable that's not going to make it to my monitor, even with this expanded longer ribbon dingus. No worries. I bought one of these. So this plugs into the Pi, little mini, and then I have just a regular HDMI connector here. All right, so we've got this now plugged in, and yes, it is external, and yes, it is just kind of hanging jankily off the back here. A little ribbon cable. It's really nice in the newer versions of this RGB to HDMI for the A600. They do give you this longer ribbon cable. This is very fragile. Don't jank and yank on it, because you could mess it all up. It's very similar to the type of ribbon cable you get with those uh, micro SD extensions that you can plug into the pies that run outside your Amigas. I use them on a, a lot of the hard drives on my big box Amigas. So I'm just going to kind of let this all just hang out back here. Again, this does fit inside the 600. You don't need to go external with this, but I'm just doing it like this because it's easy. Now to power it all on and see what happens. All right, so it is working out of the box. Look at that. Fantastic. All right. However, I am seeing some weird squiggly noise going on here. Squiggly, squiggly noise. So what that means is we're going to have to click the buttons and do some auto calibration stuff.
All right, so after using the auto calibration that the software offers in the menu system, access through the little button on the side there, boom, we have a rock solid, beautiful, gorgeous, look at this, 640 by 200 high res screen. But you know what, who wants, who wants 640 by 200? We want, uh, we want the good stuff. We want the full high res interlaced Amiga screen, even on an Amiga 600. We'll keep her in eight color mode for now and click use. Let's see how the RGB to HDMI handles that. Handles it like a rock star. That looks fantastic. All right. And what I love about using TV sets now, and I've said this before in other videos, is this the sharpest image you can get with an RGB to HDMI? No. If you use a computer monitor that has a higher pixel density, you'll get a much sharper, cleaner image. I don't like that for retro computing, especially Amigas. I like to try and recreate that CRT look using these more modern panels because they're just more convenient, they're smaller, they're lighter, they last forever, whereas we know CRTs have their issues. If you use a TV, get a 16 by nine, 24 inch TV set, the pixel density on these is much, much less. And some of them have analog video inputs like S-Video and, and, and composite video. And that nature actually adds a little bit of this kind of CRT softness to the image that I think works perfectly with Amiga Workbench and Amiga programs, especially paint software. So let's go ahead and save this. All right, and then if we go ahead and fire up, let's fire up Deluxe Paint. You can see the RGB to HDMI can handle anything you throw at it. Yeah, so see, because we're using a TV set, not a computer monitor, the softer pixel pitch, it really, really looks more like like an old 1950 VGA style monitor, or even, I'm not gonna go as far as saying it looks like a 1084, it doesn't, but it's like a really clean image, but it has a little bit of that softness to it that really just sells that whole classic retro look. So RGB to HDMI on any Amiga is beautiful. I, yes, I really do wish we had it for the AGA Amigas, but you know, maybe one day, one day, one day in the future. But for all the other Amigas, yeah, this is just a no brainer option. You definitely want to go ahead and get the RGB to HDMI for your Amiga 2000, 3000, 600, 500, uh, and just in, in and I again I recommend a television set 16 by 9 panel uh, to use them with, and they're just beautiful. They do beautiful, beautiful things. Well, that's it. Um, I hope uh, this Amiga 600 adventure has been fun. I am going to have to send it to Dr. Chris for a proper recap and a removal of the RF. But for now, it can live like this. I'm okay with this. I know this is, uh, you know, hanging off over here and looking weird, but you know, it's not, it's not hurting anything. It's not hurting anything. Oh, wow, look at that. Over here and over here. It's like a little eighties rock band thing going on. All right, thanks for watching. I'm done with this video.